Welcome to Exciting Evangel Temple. It's a great day to be a Christian. This is your place to become strong and successful. You and your family belong here. Join us at ET Sundays at 901 and 1045 a.m. You can learn more about us at excitingete.com. Good morning. Everybody's in such a good mood today. Why is that? Thank you. I didn't understand any of that. I know you have your Bible. Go with me, please, to John chapter 8. We are starting a series right now that will go for the next couple of weeks called Making a Murderer. Making a Murderer. This is one of those addictive documentaries that's on Netflix that is breaking every record because... You watch it, and you have to watch it again. And everybody I know who watched it has become obsessed with it because we're not sure what happened. Just the gist of the story is a guy named Stephen Avery, Manitowoc, Wisconsin, up near Green Bay, went to prison for 18 years for a crime he did not commit. When he got out after 18 years, suing the sheriff's department for $36 million, and suddenly he's charged with another crime of murder and I don't know if he did it or not. I don't want to hear your opinion because <laughs> everybody has one like belly buttons. And I think I get with my family and everybody argues about this. So I'm not trying to go there. I'm just trying to expose the devil. Amen. You've yeah. got to know who you're fighting against. Amen? Yeah. Amen. I don't know if you know this, but this nation was founded because people revolted against taxes. Taxes. That's why the Boston Tea Party happened. That's why the American Revolution happened. Stamp Act by England, and all of a sudden you're going to be paying more. If you want to pay more taxes, go ahead, but don't raise mine. Oh, okay. I, I expected more, but I'll work on the 1045 crowd. Thank you. There's a number that you need to text to me right now, and I'm looking forward to this. We're already getting some responses. Why does the devil hate you? And I know that he does. Why does the devil hate you? Oh, somebody put, my soul winning is robbing hell. Oh, I love that one. Another one, the devil hates me because I'm the opposite of him. That's good. Because Jesus has a plan for me when I grow up. Chastity said that. Wave at me, Chastity. She's right there. She never misses. I appreciate you. Because he's Satan, duh. <laughs> Come on, Rick Moore. I'm not going to tell everybody who that was. Glendon says, because I took his job. Janie Kerr says, I'm a prayer. Prayer. I'm a prayer. Thank you. Oh, here's one. He's jealous of my heavenly home. Oh. Another one said, my potential. Oh, I love this one. He lost me. My soul sings. I hate him so much I refuse to eat devil's food cake. Now, come on. <laughs> What's the matter with this church? I love your joy. Keep on coming. I'll read them while I'm driving. Here we go. Excuse me. All right. I hope you got this paper in your bulletin and you have it there in your lap and you're ready to fill it all out. Because you're at war. You are in a massive battle. And you lose every battle you don't know you're in. You definitely get crushed if you don't know the attacks of your enemy. And so we're going to expose that. Number one, in the making of a murderer, the devil wants to kill your joy. You ever heard the devil is in the details? It is true. He wants to do things and put people in your life that will crush your happiness, destroy your cheerful spirit. Do you have somebody in your life that always corrects you, even if it's just something tiny that they could let go. Those people are not happy, and if you're not careful, they'll make you not happy. Be careful. Joy is a weapon. The joy. Uh, this morning we were talking in our staff meeting about, uh, I said, I'm stirring up some hornets now. We're preaching against the devil, and we thank God we have security here at this church. We have cameras, and we have people packing, a lot of grandmas, and I love that. <laughs> and everybody, I said to our staff, is everybody packing? And Pastor Megan Foote started flexing her muscles. She said, these are my guns. And the men shut up. It was pretty cool. <laughs> Number two, when
when the wicked one reminds you of your past, just remind him of his what? His future is not very bright. It's pretty bleak. He is in deep, deep trouble. Every song you sing about heaven makes him sick. He can see your mansion. Did you know that? The devil can see your mansion. Oh, that must be frustrating to him, and I love it when we frustrate him. Don't be silent about heaven or about hell, because Satan influences you to keep quiet. The silence of the lambs is the reason this nation is in the mess that we're in. The devil is such a deceiver and a liar. John 8 and verse 44, I love it when Jesus gets a little stoked, when he kind of raises the temperature. He's normally kind and and gentle and tender, and neither do I condemn thee, and go and sin no more, and the Beatitudes, blessed, and all that stuff. But there are moments when the wrath of the Father gets on the Son, and you're going to see this. At the battle of Armageddon, when you and I come out of the sky, according to Revelation 19, on our white horses, we are going to be looking at the Son of God, who is no longer the merciful, gentle, compassionate grace giver. He is wearing the wrath of the Father. And I know it's old-fashioned and it's out of style and it doesn't sell a lot of CDs, DVDs to talk about the justice and wrath of the Father. He's the judge. But He still is the judge and He's never changed. Amen. you got to get this. Amen. I am the Lord, I change not. Thank God for the Holy Ghost, the emotion. Thank God for the Son, the wonderful grace. But you're going to stand before the Father. The Father, you'll have your attorney there. Thank you, Jesus. He's your counselor. But you're going to see this. You ought to study Revelation 19. As you and I are coming out of the sky, the Bible says Jesus will wear the wrath of God. It talks about stomping the grapes of wrath of Almighty God. And it's going to see, you are going to see this transformation that will absolutely boggle your brain as you watch the Prince of Peace become this raging inferno coming out of heaven. The Bible says his very appearance will destroy the Antichrist. His eyes are on fire, fire. Our God is a consuming fire. I love mercy and I love the gentle breeze of grace, but don't forget the other side of God. That's why people don't feel like there's any judgment to come anymore. Preachers are preaching that. So verse 44 says, you are the children of your father, the devil. And you love to do evil things that he does. He was a what? There it is. Making a murderer right here. Words of Christ talking about old Slewfoot. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated what? Got to get that. You got to get that. Go for truth. Go for truth. Don't let somebody convince you what's right and wrong. You study to show yourself approved unto God. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. I love the last line of John 8, 44. When he lies, it is consistent with his character. For he is a liar and the daddy of all lies. Whew. He's trying to murder your family. Number three, Satan wants to destroy your family, you don't have to let him. You fight for your family. You guard what's on TV. You guard the computers and the phones. and You guard who comes into your house. It was always a fun day at the Hutchings house growing up when somebody came in and said a bad word. Mama would take them down. I love that. It was a one-time experience that nobody ever did it twice. You know, we've got... <laughs> I was in line at Walmart the other day, and this little two-year-old's in a basket, and grabbing all the candy and putting it down. And, and uh, you know, the first seven times, it was kind of cute. And then Mama kept saying the same thing. This is the last time I'm warning you. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I bet you flunk math. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I feel an attitude coming on here. The child just kept doing it and doing it and doing it because the child knew Mama is a liar. Mama's not going to whip me. Hey, if you say you're whipping your kids, just go ahead. I know it hurts you worse than it hurts them, but that's not even true. It felt pretty good when I was discipling my children. 
ET families are important to me, important to God, important to this church. Hey, do whatever it takes to fight for your family. Thank God for the families. These are God's ideas. I don't care how you feel on a Sunday morning. Get out of bed and take your family to church. Don't send them. Take them. Come on, somebody. You're here, so shout amen. <laughs> Where were you last week? Sorry. Hey, let's go on. Number four. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. I want you to just go there, please. Everybody go to first, or Second Corinthians. I meant to say 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I want you to look at verse 3 and then verse 14. But I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted. Everybody say corrupted. Just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. Oh, that's an important verse. Skip down to verse 14. Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. He is not an angel of light. He pretends to be. He dresses up. It's make-believe. He's not even a roaring lion. He appears or acts like a roaring lion, but that's not who he is. He's a loser. He's a defeated foe. Not even smart enough to stay in heaven. Come on. I don't have to fear the devil. He fears the Christ in me and in you. Turn to somebody and slap him a high five, would you? Man, that was the quietest high five I've ever heard. Must be Razorback fans. Number five. Billy Graham said, Satan has misled people by whispering that they could, can believe in Jesus without being changed. I love that word changed. Every Sunday and Wednesday when people come to the altar or the cross, they're changed. If you came down here and got saved and nothing changed, you didn't get saved. You ought to look different. You ought to walk different. You ought to dress different. You change what you love. You change what you listen to. You ought to smell different. People look at you and say, what's the matter with you? You look so different. Have you lost weight? Oh, yeah, I dropped some burdens. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Number six, the tempter wants to murder your ministry. He cannot break you unless you help him. I'm going to say that again. He cannot break you unless you help him. And Many people in this room have a ministry that you've abandoned because you've bought into a lie that... It wasn't God's will, or you can't do it well, or whatever those reasons are. You thought they were legit, but I'm exposing something today. It's a lie from hell. The devil has conned you. He has deceived you into believing your ministry is not legitimate. And so you've either given up or slowed down pursuing it. Stop that today. Stop it and say, I'm going all out for Jesus. Evangel Temple is your headquarters for revival. I love saying that. I love the outbreak of victory that happens in this church. We were at a funeral the other day, and the church, the people at the funeral were almost all ET people and just spontaneously started singing. I've never seen that before. I love coming into this building. And when I was at this funeral, everybody started singing. I thought, God, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this church. This is a church that not only lifts up hurting people, but we put down the devil. And he knows we expose him. We don't accept what he does. Amen. And if you come in here with a doctrine of destruction, we're going to let you have it in, and put you in a holy headlock and do something with you. But we are not going to let God and God's house be corrupted by Satan. Which leads me to Ephesians 6. Go there, please. Ephesians 6 is the greatest spiritual warfare chapter in the Bible. Would you write that in your notes somewhere? Ephesians 6 is the greatest spiritual warfare chapter in the Bible. And God gives a final word. Here it is. Ephesians 6 and verse 10. A final word. Be weak and wimpy. Is that what it says? What does it say? Be strong. Everybody shout, be strong. In the Lord and His mighty power. Put on all of the armor of God. Grab your pen and circle all. Some of you have most of his armor on, but you don't have it all on. And so you lose in battle. You get attacked and the temptation comes and you crash and burn because you have most of the armor on, but not all of it on. So put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all. Everybody say all. all. When you wear it all, you crush it all. When you cover yourself with all that he tells you to, all the enemies that attack you lose. All of them. You should never, ever, 
ever lose to the devil. Never. Never. Now we all are. Every one of us in this room keep losing almost on a daily basis. But you don't have to, and you shouldn't if you wear it all. Everybody say all. all. Verse 12, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities. Notice that. Authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places, not hell, not even the earth, heavenly places. The accuser of the brethren is at the throne heaven talking about you, lying about you. That's why you stay so close to Jesus, because he steps up and says, Father, that's not true. Father, hey, Dad, that, that's another lie. He's the accuser of the brethren. You know, okay, okay. And the Father is so emotional, I mean, ready to, for justice, that thank God, G you're going to see this when we get there. You're going to see Jesus calming the Father down. He has to be calmed down sometime. Oh, Pastor Don, that's heresy. We'll talk to Moses. Moses calmed God down several times. You ought to read that. It's kind of comical. God, don't, don't kill people. Not today. Not a good day for killing. And God says, well, I can't stand them. If I, if I get close to them, I'll fry them. And he says, okay, I got it. This is the Father. I'll follow from a distance. And Moses appeals to his pride and says, what are the neighbors going to say if you kill all your people? And God, okay, but I, God was afraid of what he's going to do to people. That's why your attorney is so extremely valuable. Amen. When the devil lies about you or demons who are in, here it is, heavenly places, they say things about you, you say, Jesus, take the wheel, hallelujah, stand up here and talk about me, and he will. That's why first thing you're going to hear when you get there from your attorney, your lawyer, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Come, you blessed of my Father. That's your attorney talking. Come, you blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom. Man, that's good stuff. Verse 13, therefore put on every piece of God's armor. I did not plan to say this, but God keeps drilling it in my spirit. Many of you, if not all of you in this room, have so many pieces of God's armor on, but you don't have it all on. And it's like you may as well not wear any of it if you're not going to wear all of it. What is it? It's listed here. Stand your ground, verse 14, the belt of truth, the body armor of righteousness. Verse 15, the shoes for peace. Verse 16, the shield of faith. Verse 17, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. And I love verse 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times. Everybody say all times. all times. And on every occasion, stay alert. Be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Oh, this is powerful. I love the power of God. I went out the other day on my Kawasaki on I-540, and I just cranked it, and I started laughing and yelling and just said, thank you, Lord, for this power. It just felt so good. And then motor guys on other bikes, hey, and they wave it. They don't ever wave at me when I'm in my Tahoe, but I'm on my Kawasaki. Hey, hey, hi, hi, brother, hi. <laughs> Trim your beard, brother. Thank you very much. Verse eight, or point eight, make the devil feel like a lion in a den of Daniels. That's good, isn't it? Make the devil feel like a lion in a den of Daniels. Number nine, the adversary wants to assassinate your dreams. There are some killings that are called murder. Some are called homicide. But if you're famous enough, it's called assassination. I think you're famous. You're famous in hell. People who come to ET are blessed by heaven and the favor of God is on you. We hear it every week about testimonies, what God has done because you're a tither. But people that come to this church are also known in hell. You are despised because you come to a church that's making a difference. We're not just going to complain about what's wrong. We're going to fix it, or at least try. And so when we try to fix it, the devil goes, oh, ooh, I don't know about that. So he, want, he doesn't just want to commit a homicide. He wants to assassinate you because you're famous. Kennedy was assassinated. Lincoln was assassinated. It, it's just amazing how this guy, whose name is Harvey Oswell, Lee Harvey Oswell, is known as an assassinator. 
He changed our nation. One skinny little guy changed our nation. For the enemy to attack you and have devastating results makes demons dance and party all over hell. You don't have to let the devil win. Turn to someone and say, are you listening? <laughs> Number 10, James 4, 7 is your formula. In making of a murderer, here's the answer. You do three things. Number one, you submit to God. Write that down, please. You submit to God. What does that mean? You give him your heart. You read his word. You tithe. You praise. You witness. You worship him. You're submitting everything you have to God. The second thing you do is resist the devil. He is not going to move out on his own. You've got to evict him. Don't just think it. Say it out loud. I said it this morning. Satan, I bind you. Every day you ought to do two things. You bind him and you plead the blood over him. If you have to plead the fifth, plead Galatians 5.1. Stand fast in the liberty that God has set you free. Be not entangled again in the yoke of what? Bondage. That's right, Pastor Matt. Number 11. Oh, by, by the way, the third thing you do is you watch him flee. James 4, 7. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And then watch him run. Hallelujah. Watch him run. Your strength is always revealed when you're attacked. Rewind. Your strength is always revealed when you're attacked. We complain about it. But it, it's exposing our Holy Ghost muscles. I don't like being attacked, and you don't either. But when you are attacked, you show how big you are in Christ. Yes, yes, it's you, and Christ inside of you. Number 11, the accuser of the brethren is not afraid of a Bible with dust on it. Please, please, please don't just carry it. Read it. Mark it up. I'm going to use it one day at your funeral. Mark it up. I, I think a Bible that's falling apart belongs to somebody who ain't. I love seeing people with these old Bibles and pages are falling out. And you, you know, you can't remember what book it is or what verse, but you know it's up on the top left side toward the end of the New Testament. Yeah, okay, I'll find it there because I've got it in red. Hallelujah. Number 12, don't just analyze the Bible. Memorize it. Memorize it. Speak it out. It's words of life. I was talking to myself yesterday. Raise your hand if you talk to yourself. Let me see your hand. Good, good. You talk to intelligent people, don't you? I see those two hands back there, my brother. Thank you. I do all the time, and I just start talking to myself. And I said, self. And I said, what? <laughs> and I started thinking about all the goofy hockey teams that I love. I love the Washington Capitals because of Alexander Ovechkin. I love the Boston Bruins because of big... Zedano Charo, six foot nine. I love the, mm, let's see, oh, uh, Chicago Blackhawks. I've always loved them since I was a little kid. Those names probably mean zero to you, right? Because, you know, in Arkansas, hockey is about as popular as beans on a bus trip. People don't go that direction, <laughs> and you just say, I'm staying away. Many times when you and I talk about the Word of God, we think we're impressing people by talking about sanctification and transformation and all the other shuns. And they're looking at you going, you're an alien. You, you, I don't want, I don't want what you got because I can't understand what it is. This Christianity is not complicated. Amen. It is not rocket surgery, as George Bush said. This is very easy to understand. You make Jesus first and whip the devil. Amen. Come on, somebody shout Hallelujah. Number 13, you can't walk with the king of kings while holding hands with the prince of darkness. Amen. The book says, come out from among them. Everybody's coming out these days. How about church people? Come out. Come out wherever you are. No more hide and seek. Amen. Come out from among them. Jesus said, you're either for me or what? That's right. And then the point you've been waiting for all morning long, the last one. Hallelujah. 14, the evil one masquerades as anything you need him to be. He isn't an initiator. He's an imitator. Oh, I hope you get this. Somebody needs to put this on social media. 
Because there's so many good people battling with this. They're wondering why they crash and burn at the casino and why they can't keep a marriage, and why they can't eat healthy or stop using drugs. It's because if you have a problem and you expose it or are not willing to fix it, Satan zeroes in on that problem. Let me give you a great example. If the devil sees that one bad driver can mess up your whole day, he'll send one every day in front of you, every day. And he's good at it. There are certain commercials that I see on TV that I just want to say, oh, Jesus, would you please destroy that commercial? I don't ever want to hear it again. It's so irritating. Remember, please don't squeeze the charm. You just go, nah, I'm going to say that one more time. And I squeeze your head off. And, I, and you just wonder, what am I thinking? Why is this happening? And so you let it out, and the devil says, aha, I see what bothers you. And so he will always send what bothers you. There are many things that bother me that I don't speak out loud. I have held my tongue so many times. I've got marks right here talking to Carol. And I'm just very gentle and, and loving. There are times in your life when you just start complaining, oh, it's too hot, it's too cold, hate snow, hate rain, hate Sundays, hate, hate, hate. Man, you're easy. You are easy for the devil to discourage. I hate it when you say hate all the time. <laughs> Stop hating things and start loving things. Amen. We had some people last week complain about this weather. If you don't, just get on out of here. If you, I, don't, I think God forgot winter. Don't remind him about it, but it seems like it's been in the 70s and 80s. And I'm saying, this is why I live in Arkansas. God lives here. Amen. My sister's up in Minnesota. I think she thought out this week after last week. It's just one of those things where it's so cold up there. They're telling lies just to get their pants on fire. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is not in my notes here, and I apologize for that. He is called a ferocious lion. And yes, he wants to intimidate you. That's pretty intimidating, but let me give you some really good. <laughs> I love this. The thing about many lions is that's all they do. That's all they do. This may break your bubble, but lions are extremely lazy. And I think it's so perfect that the devil masquerades as a lion. My favorite character in all movies is the cowardly lion. What have they got that I ain't got? Courage. You can say that again. He is not a lion. He pretends to be. You need to follow the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Would you bow your head, please? Father, I thank you for giving us a brand new start today. We know the enemy hates when we walk in victory, so we declare it today. We walk in total, complete, unashamed victory. While every head is bowed and nobody looking around, please. If you'd say, Pastor Don, I'm not sure that I'm going to heaven. And today, I'm going to give my heart to Jesus. If that's you, just lift your hand. I'm just asking this one time. So thank you. Thank you. Who else? Just lift your hand and say, today, I'm surrendering to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I need everybody in the house to take your hand and put it in God's hand, please. Everybody in the house, say this after me say heavenly father i'm sorry for my sins forgive me for my past come into my heart save my soul i give you my problems and all of my pain from this moment on i'm a child of the king satan you lose and christ has won in Jesus' name, I am free. Amen. Come on, somebody, clap for the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us today. Evangel Temple is here for you. Call us for prayer at 479-782-912. We would be honored to have you join us for a dynamic worship service, Sundays at 901 and 1045 a.m. 
Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash exciting ET. 